Episode 636, Brain oh. Candy Podcast. I love that. 636, get mm-hmm. your kicks. It's really... It's the Brain Candy Podcast. I hope so much that on our Chicks. spinoff... What? What? I hope on our spinoff, Things We Got Wrong, you finally admit that it's oh, no. really terrible that you've put me through the rhyming bit for seven years. Oh, man. That is a lot. And and I'm going to say I regret nothing. You sh- you should think about it. Just think about it because like, like there's only nine numbers. Is, yeah, but there are so many fun words and fun things you could say and play around with. Like, no, I repeated everything. I don't know. Uh, just correct. meditate You're on You're right. It. It's terrible. But that it's kind of like, I don't know. It's a tick. You have a tick. I do have a tick. This could be that. This could be absolutely a side effect of, I don't know, this brain. Well, it's like, you know, that disease where they say puns. Well, I, I, I do that. other weird things like like sometimes if I haven't been on my medication for a while and then I, st- I take it for that first week. I used to have this when I was little and now I like I, – I, well, when I was just not on medication when I was little, I had this. <laughs> but people would say words. And I would spell them in my head. Mm. And then it stopped when I became an adult. And then the only time I feel that now is when I don't take my meds for a while and then start them. It's like a weird symptom, like an OCD symptom I get for like one week. And then I'm no, I don't get it. But I feel like that might be the it's same. It's related. As like, yeah. It's related to making rhymes. And it's so my, weird. I don't know. It's very yeah. weird. Like I, I almost can don't sense quit. sometimes I feel like you're like, I'm not going to do it. And then you like, just yes, at the last second, I have no impulse it. control. Ah, <laughs> that's what it is. It's terrible. My brain gives me all the options, so it's like gives me everything that's next door to that word, and then I don't know which one to say or not say. Next oh, door. it's terrible. Yeah, you know, like you know when you forget a word, and your people say you're not supposed to try to think of that word. You're supposed to think of things related to it. Oh, have you heard this before? No. Oh yeah, that that'll help you remember the word because your brain tr- knows what it's trying to think of. So if you think of things that are connected to it, whether it like, I don't know, things that are similar. So you re- forgot the word for basketball and you thought about baseball and football. I don't know. Fuck, I'm thinking of <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind. All the but, balls. Yeah. Um. But. Oh man. Okay. Anyways. Anyways, yeah. Anywho, we have to make this episode really, really good though, Sarah, because they mm-hmm. only get one ooh uh, episode this week. No pressure, Sarah. And would you like to know why you only get one episode? Because Sarah, yes, Sarah, like a complete doofus, doofus, is going to camp. I'm going to camp. Like with all those COVID kids running around. That is a good point. They're, they're, but you know what? Everybody is getting tested before they go up. So it'll be a whole camp full of tested individuals. Yeah, that's good. But you're still going to get it. Yeah. I'm just telling Fingers you. Crossed. I really hope not. I have to take a test before I go. So, But I am- you're going to fly there and you're going to get it. And it's going to be too soon I- for the test to know. And then you're going to hang out with all these kids and give them coke. I'll be masked the whole time. I'm going to wear a mask and do all that on there, but I'm not going to be all like... Plus See, I, what, you know. Do you guys know what she's right now? She is optimistic. <laughs> I, I am always optimistic. It's terrible. It's really my, my toxic trait. <laughs> Optimism. Yeah. But the kids are lucky to have you. I do know that. And Thank we're you. sad that you'll be gone. It'll just be me and the Brainiacs just sitting here waiting sitting till there. next week. Damn it. What kind of crafts do you think they're going to make? Like uh, those tambourines out of paper plates and beans? <laughs> we're, we're, that's more day camp, you know? We're more like sleepaway camp. What goes so on like, there again? Just jokes or what? Well, I mean, just jokes. What if? What if it was just like, I mean, we do, there are a lot of jokes. Yeah. So I many know. jokes. Yes. Yeah. Or is it like, like just boys and, and girls and everybody like getting all horny and like trying to sneak off and smooch? This isn't wet hot American summer. <laughs> I thought that was sort it's of the thing about to meatballs. Sleepaway. If you've seen meatballs, what goes on there? Just silly pranks. It's just and like stuff. silliness. It's it's fun. 
It's good clean fun. wacky water days. It's playing yeah. on a lake. It's um, right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Rock climbing and hiking and arts and crafts and archery, music and so much music. Yeah, I- I'm bringing my ukulele. <laughs> that's like the only place where I'm like, that makes sense, right? It fits. <laughs> like that's why I've never brought it. Like you know, yeah. I never busted out to be yeah. like ukulele girl. You. Can can you can we admit this that even though I I do play the ukulele I have not ever busted yeah, she out she doesn't at an inappropriate like I've never been like gather like, around guys play you <laughs> gather <laughs> around <laughs> yeah she's not like playing ukulele without our consent mm-hmm. you know yeah it's more she for reads me. the room yeah yeah it's solitary um okay that'll be fun I yeah. think. And I yeah. hope you don't get sick. Me too. And oh, just I can't wait. The only thing I'm I'm worried about more. The only kind of sick I, I think I might get is freaking heat stroke because it's going to be a hundred and seven degrees there. Yeah, what are you going to do to beat the heat? I bet those cabins aren't air conditioned. No, that is. Not. A, are you in those bunks or barracks or whatever no, the hell? We have like directors' cabins that are ta- like close, but I I it's still there's it's no, like I don't a fan. There's an AC. Yeah. yeah. It's One of like, those like, like oscillating oh, fans. <laughs> There's nothing, but I do like a nice hot hot room in the evening. So you do not. Yes, I do. People hate staying in hotel rooms with me. Wow, I've never heard of anybody that likes that. Yeah, I like it like a nice seventy-eight. Oh, all right. Well, maybe you'll 80. be okay then. Yeah. I think Good so. grief! You're going to be so sweaty and clammy. Yeah. I am not jealous. Okay. What do I want to start with? Let me see. Okay. How but about... But, like, do you think you'd ever send Lincoln to camp? Heck, yeah. I wish he'd want to go. Well, yeah. I'd be okay. so happy. Give me that kid. Yeah. <laughs> he won't even. He won't. He's got anxiety. He would think that he doesn't like it, and then he would be there for a day, and this is every kid. And I've watched them. I watched the most... Oh. I watched the cutest little kid, like the most nervous, scared, like don't ever want to leave, thought they were like, and were, I don't know, like, not like Lincoln's not the loner kid, but I did see the loner kids go from being like that to then being counselors at the camp to then being like doing really cool stuff because they like gained the confidence. I know camp did it. And so it's like the best place. Cause yeah. You know, counselors how, like, do not let that happen. You know how usually when you move around a lot, like if you're in a military family or something, you get really good at making friends because yes. that's like what your specialty becomes. Yeah. Even though we have moved around so much, he is so bad at making friends, which is probably my fault. <laughs> it's probably genetic. Um, and he says like, nobody likes him and stuff. That's why I'm the one with him all the time. Okay. Here's the thing. I, that's not true. Cause like, I, I like him. So I think like he's more of an adult kind of like, kid. Old, maybe he's like an old soul. I felt like nobody liked me when I was little because I was like, I got along with adults though. Lincoln gets along with adults. Yeah. He gets along with adults. But yeah, so what, he's what's just the vibe not, at camp He's, he's, he's. He he's uh uh what's the overqualified for the position. <laughs> yeah. But that would be so I think you're right. I think he would eventually really love it. Yes. Everyone and I've it's never just heard getting anyone to say be they hate like it. crazy boys running around and like doing all the kind of stuff that like they want to do. I know. I'll tell you what he does love and everyone loves, and that's best fiends. I love it. Yeah. I mean he and we all enjoy like the newness of it. There's always like new characters and yes. stuff to play on there. And then it's challenges. challenging. Yes. And all of the Brainiacs and I are just trying to keep up with Sarah's incredible meteoric rise well, uh, on listen. the game. <laughs> listen, I get a little fixated. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She does. And I need to take gift. brain breaks. Yes. It's very important. This yeah, is we the best all way to do. do it. 
Yeah, we all need brain breaks every now and then. And what's really nice about Best Fiends is you don't need Wi-Fi. So even when you're traveling. So much. Or even when you're at camp, when there's no Wi-Fi in the whole, like for real, I'm not even going to have Wi-Fi. So I will be freaking fiending it up. (laughs) Fiending it. Yeah. See, that is good. Best Fiends, you have created a public service for all of us. You can collect tons of friends that get powered up as you play more levels. Every win brings new challenges. There's all kinds of puzzles, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Play it. Yes. Download Best Fiends for free from the App Store or Google Play, plus earn more with $5 worth of in-game rewards when you reach level five. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Um. Yeah. I've never heard anybody say, I went to camp and I hated it. Right. Never. Really? Must be great. Yeah. Yeah. It is great. Um, all right. Even, Let's... yeah. Even Eli was like, oh, you're going to camp. It's so fun. I'm surprised. Camp. Has he never gone to camp? Because no, he's he Jewish. Yeah. The yeah, Jews Jewish love camp. camp. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jewish, I'm telling you, they love yeah. camp, those guys. Love it. Oh, he's, that's nice. He's totally with me on this one. Ask him if he ever smooched anyone. I'm pretty sure that's what goes on. Oh, that's where I had all my for like. See, say, then why did you kisses, deny it that's, when I, I said den- they get all horny and like try to smooch each other? You just didn't like okay, the word they horny. Do. They do. They do. They do. They do. They do. <laughs> they do. That's true. That's true. Like it's so it's, innocent. It's, it's, it's yeah. It's like not. Can you even? Because when I was like kissing these, guys, I remember <laughs> I had like one of my. I think it was. It might have been my first kiss. Yeah. I this is awful. It <laughs> it was my first consensual kiss cuz one time a boy who was one grade older than me tripped me in the bushes on the way home and then he kissed me and I was not prepared for it. No, that doesn't count. If and it's so I felt like that didn't count. So this is like technically my first kiss. That's and nice. I had that at camp and then we were doing the rock wall. And we raced and I beat him and then he wouldn't kiss me anymore. And that should have been the first time I learned the lesson. Of yes. Don't. And I never, oh, oh my gosh, this is the origin story. The first kiss, shit, man. I started I, I like, the, oh man, this is like therapy. I swear. <laughs> Every time we talk, I say it out loud and I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> that's, wait, this, yeah, that could that's be why. Yeah, because that's this I'm I'm noticing a theme. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This wow. is where it all began. That, that was the genesis. Okay, maybe I'll go back to the place where it all started and I'll release that energy into the world and be like, okay, you don't have to win anymore, Sarah. Aww. And then I can maybe and kiss then I'll be like, voice. okay, people will still kiss you if you don't win. And then maybe I'll learn sometimes it's okay to let somebody win. Oh, that'd be a nice change. Or just be like better about it. That would be even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Isn't it weird when you look back on dumb stuff that you kind of forget about and then you're like, you see it in a new light based on what you you've have experienced? You say- Yes. Yeah. It will re... This is kind of what EMDR does. It like allows us to reprocess memories. I mean, EMDR is very specific, but that kind of therapy that people like, it's the best ever. And uh, for like trauma and stuff like that, but it allows us to like reprocess memories because you're seeing them from a safe place, from a, uh, a I don't know, wise self kind of perspective yeah. that can give a lot of clarity and then just let you know that you're safe now. And that helps just... Yeah, so we got to say things out loud. Like, yeah. I got to say, we, Sarah and I watched the challenge on our lives on Patreon. And I mean, that's exactly what that experience is for me, even though that's, these aren't my seasons. Like, I, it's like I'm there and I'm feeling it all over again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And I'll think of things or whatever. I absolutely, yes, Susie, Mm because that's like what I was talking to you about, about when I watched the challenge where everybody was real mean to me, uh, and I watched it from like an adult perspective, and I'm like, this is very unacceptable behavior. (laughs) Right. And like, I I would, I saw it like, oh, okay, 
I see what we're dealing with here. Sarah, don't listen to those people. Yeah. And, you know, and it that's really, why it's like, like kind of a shame that we don't go anymore because it would be totally different. <laughs> We'd be like, this is foolish. This is stupid. What are you yes. guys doing? Uh, sorry, Teej. I won't be doing that. <laughs> Teej. <laughs> right. And it's okay to say no. Did you know that, right? TJ? Uh, no, I will not be running naked, nor will I be eating a sheet cake. Thank you. The end. <laughs> right. It's all oh, so I have to stupid. go in? Okay. It's so stupid. Please. Can you? I, I can't. That uh, This is hilarious to me. Is, is it only funny to us? Yeah, it is. But who cares? It's our but show. But <laughs> like... The weird thing is, though, and maybe this is just the fact that if we did go, yeah. it would be the case, as it seems when we watch it, that as soon as they're back in that environment, yes. they start yep. acting like that again. Yes. This is what we call going, going home, home in therapy. Yes. We talk about this, where you will revert back to, um, I want to say it's like the the identity that is confirmed by other people around you in that environment, you know? Well, it's just like you say, when you go home for Thanksgiving, they have an idea of who you are. Yes. And they're not updating it. Yeah. Is because we're, you know, that's kind of how I feel like how we, you know, because when you go home, you can almost be any age, but it's like who our parents and others and our siblings and everything have locked us in as being. Yes. Yeah. For me, it's like that, 13 year old like oh yeah it's so weird i always talk about that how your family does not see you as athletic and stuff (laughs) it's very strange (laughs) like they have not updated in 30 what a fucking 25 years it's real but in their defense (laughs) like compared to everybody i'm like the least look at my mother she rides motorcycles and scales buildings not successfully all the time no, Sarah, you, that's not, you're not the least. It's, it's just not true. Like you're buying into this label. It's Maybe false. I am. Like, you're right. I am. I think I am. I'm athletic. That's you, funny. I love how you're trying to convince yourself. I, like, Cause sometimes I don't feel like it. You're like, the sky is blue, right? Yeah. Right? My yeah. God. Yeah. But it is like that. When we watch the show, you, you kind of feel. You reflect on your experiences, at least I do. And you do the same thing. Yeah. I'm not like that. I'm not really mean like they say. You know how people are like, and I'm like, no, you're not. I can't believe that you buy into them saying like, you're, I say the same thing to you. Hang on a sec. Yes. Whoa. I admit it though. You're... I admit it too. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. We agree that. We're good. We're good. Don't worry guys. We're not fighting. <laughs> Yeah, She's still so mad at weird. me that I'm going to camp, but that's separate. I am mad, but yeah. I don't know why because yeah. it <laughs> doesn't yeah. affect me. She's in so any mad way. that I'm going to be the mental health like like uh, person <sighs> for. I guess I just know, or I think I know that it's going to be really bad, <laughs> and you're going to be like, "It is the first time back I since COVID, so kids are going to be wild." Oh, it's their first camp since COVID? Yep. Oh, yep. God. No, this yep. is even worse than I thought. Yep. It's going to be nuts. <laughs> going to be nuts. It's Anywho. too hot. It's too covid It's just too. It's too, too. Too, too. But we got the songs. Yeah. <laughs> it's a silver lining. Okay. Yep. Uh, the only thing I wanted to start with was, oh, I watched uh, the Bill Burr, the new Netflix special. I think it's called Live yes. at Red Rock. Yes, right by my house. I love Bill Burr. Oh, is it right by your house? Right by my house, spitting distance. I go there. Oh all the yes. Time. yes. When I saw that it's where gorgeous. it was, I thought, oh my gosh, she. However beautiful you think beautiful. it is, it's more. It looks beautiful. Oh, it's the best place. I gotta say, however, I hated that venue for his special because um, the outdoorness of it. Yeah. Some for some reason invited heckling. And everyone oh. was like whooping and all throughout it. And it was very oh, distracting. No. Yeah. You know what? That is a good, it is too expo, too open. Yeah. And in a way, something about comedy that's so great is that it's intimate and it's in yeah. a closed environment. And yeah. that's why they do it always like downstairs in a basement and yeah. like in a cellar. 
It's always yeah, like the, the downstairs, the underground, the cellar. You can have store. hecklers anywhere, but this was just like, it's something about the venue really made it more. And I didn't love that because it was just so distracting. Um, Even and, being there, there are more distractions when you go to anything there. It yeah. It doesn't feel like you can. And people like, probably felt more free to get up and go get a beer or do whatever. Yes, and correct. It's just like more that. activity. It's too open. <gasps> Interesting. But <clears throat> I think this was his first special since COVID. And so it was interesting to compare like his act from before and how it is now. And a lot of like progressives and especially women really hate Bill Burr. I love him. I don't mind his jokes I at all because they're like funny. Him. Yes. And he's right. He did a whole bit that reminded me of our conversation about the WNBA. He was like, mm -hmm. this, ladies, because uh, ladies are always like, why don't you guys watch the yeah. WNBA? And he's like, ladies, name your top five favorite WNBA players. We couldn't do it. <laughs> he's like, this is your fault. Yes. You're the reason. And I thought, yeah, it is. We suck. We're the worst. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hypocritical. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, he, it was more contemplative and it felt like he was trying to unpack like why he's so angry, which I think I oh, want more great. white men to do. Yeah. Like really try to get to the bottom of like, why are you so mad at women and and at, at society? What is it? What are you mad about? I yes. I think that's an interesting question for all men because they are really mad if mass shootings are any indication and the murder rate uh like the lockup rate of like men versus women yep what are you guys so mad about if we look at their you know responses their record, to, their, yeah. to, their, to their feelings i will i um i watched just last night the highlights from or like best of from the bill burr special Bill Burr and Friends or Net, like Netflix oh, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah, a yeah. joke. Mm -hmm. It's a comedy special or whatever it was. Yes. There were two trans comedians who were hilarious and did exactly what you said, Suze, when you said we need trans comedians yeah. who make – oh, yeah. my God. They were so funny. Really? I like so – I was – I loved it. And I, the whole Great. time I was thinking about what you said and – now I can't remember their names and ah, that's okay. I'm gonna look it up. That's great. Yeah. And it it's it was just really great to see. And I felt like all of the comedians that were featured in that did exactly what we were talking about on that episode of like what's funny. We would love people to make you if you are part of that community, make that joke. Like, um, what's her name? Eliza Schlesinger. How do you say yeah. her last name? Yeah. Uh, she did a whole bit, a whole bunch of stuff on being white, like white woman stuff. Oh, good. Like, we need more so of that. Funny. And our like worst nightmares being outwoked by another white woman. <laughs> like, it was so good. Like, so I was, I, I loved it, and it, it checked those boxes, and I thought that Netflix and um, yeah, whoever put that together did a good job of that. Okay, that's a good tip. I'll have to look out the, for that. There, they they came out with these comedy specials that were, yeah, for different groups, and like there was an LGBTQ one. There was, a, yeah, they were like themed. Yeah, and it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that comedy is having such a moment. It's very exciting. Yeah. Because we sure as hell do need to laugh. And, you know, we do need to eat also. And that's why I'm glad there's Green Chef. That. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now that's a stage-worthy performance right there. That is, that was good transitions. Well, okay. So if you guys, maybe you're confused. Maybe you're like, I don't know the difference between all these meal deliveries. Oh. Let me tell you the difference. Yes. Green Chef has options for whatever it is that you want to do. So maybe you want it to be vegetarian. Gluten-free. Gluten-free. Maybe you want it to be uh, vegan. Maybe you want it to be keto. And yeah. then you can customize it that way. You can mix and match too. They don't all have to be one. Kind. Organic? Yes. Yeah. And it's like that healthy lifestyle type thing. But you know how it usually tastes like garbage if it's healthy? Oh, Not so true. Good. It's so good. This is where my best ever in the whole entire world uh, – French fries. Not they're I call them French fries, but they were just potato wedges that I baked. Oh 
Lee Crud when I like discovered aioli. <laughs> she discovered donkey sauce. Yeah, well, that's, you need that because the uh, f- the potato wedge thing because you have the problem of like you can't eat bread now, so you need like the something else that's like equally yes, yeah, yes. substantial. Yeah. Anyway, they have organic ground beef, uh, organic chicken, wild caught oh, sake s- sockeye salmon. Really nice products. Yes. Really good food delivered to your door. Convenient, easy, all that stuff. Excellent and yummy. You have no idea how much it takes off. This is funny. Yes. No pun intended. How much it takes off of your plate when you (laughs) have meal planning out of the way. It's non-negotiable. Somebody else is going to handle what's on your plate. Yeah. And they're going to deliver it to you. And then all you do is whip it up. And you're like, what am I a, a... Freaking to free up space. Chef de cuisine. It's anyway, so good. go to greenchef.com slash brain candy one three five and use code brain candy one three five to get hundred and thirty five dollars off across five boxes and your first box ships free. That's greenchef.com slash brain candy one thirty five and use code brain candy one thirty five and you get one hundred and thirty five bucks off across five boxes and your first box ships free. I paused mine, you know, because I'm going to camp. So right. easy to do. <laughs> That's smart, Sarah. You're a real troubleshooter. Yeah. You you keep like bringing up camp. It's like you want to rub it in. Soon I'm going <laughs> it's whether fu- you like it's it or not. It's funny because I know that every time it makes you giggle and roll your eyes. <laughs> um, okay. This is going to disturb Sarah. That's why I'm bringing oh, it up. Ooh, There's an article I saw today in Slate.com mm-hmm. uh, com, and it is talking about on eBay – some people are selling oh. medical records from like mental institutions from like the oh. 1950s. This is not okay. With like personal information, nope. their names, all their nope. info. <laughs> nope. Can't. That, you know who's breaking the rules is whoever didn't yeah. destroy those files. What's the protocol? How, how long? Seven years you? for me. Oh. Yeah. Even if you're still seeing the patient or only if no, you have No, seven it. years after termination. And then if they are, and you keep them until they are 18 and then it's seven years after they turn 18, if they're a minor. Okay. Interesting. That, and that's obviously what should happen, whatever that is right. set. So yeah. I wonder. It's funny because that's the think- same amount of time that like things fall off of your credit or <laughs> too, like your taxes. Yeah. They, they won't they audit decide, you. Like seven years. Oh, that's good. And like my mom always says that that's like how your cells turn over. I don't, I don't know. Oh, that's what I've this, heard that like, too. You have yeah, all new every cells. Seven years. So you probably like, made that up, you know, right. It's it sounds like good step, though. That 10,000 <laughs> steps thing. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That seems right. a little too round yeah. of a number. Um, yeah. And I wonder, do you think these files they must have been stolen, right? Because if they are the New York State, yeah. it was New York State, um, yeah. whatever medical board. Yeah, they're not just gonna give them. Well, to there somebody. was that whole time where who was the president who shut down the um, mental institutions? Who said we're not doing Ronald this anymore? Reagan, and then. There was no net to catch everybody. They just were like, mm, okay, we're yeah, just not doing he, that. Yeah, he didn't shut them down, but he did defund them. Yes. Yeah. Which then Which led is the to same. them having to close their doors. And I would imagine that some, for some, it was just like, we have to walk away. Like, whose job is it to do this? And, no, you know. That's true. Walk away. And it's not like, I, I, I got to imagine, it's not like it is now where, you know, I'm taking an ethics exam that tells me that makes sure I know all of this. That's like, you know, renewed every year and all this stuff. <laughs> We've and come then, a long like, way. The the information is available in the textbook, and I can like Google it and all this stuff. They're like, hey, you want to work at the mental institution? Okay. The end. Like that. Like I don't. I don't think it, it's. Quite people had have quite had quite the same knowledge and, and awareness. Of See, what. that to me is a great bit that could exist <laughs> because that's true. Yes, correct. Who else was going to do this shit? I forget. It really was dealing with shit. I forget which member of our book club. It might have been Don or Mo, but they recommended a book about lobotomies because you had oh, yes. been talking about it, 
And, you know, when you read about certain kinds of people and the ways that their mental illness manifests and how violent it can be occasionally Uh and how disruptive it can often be, Mm -hmm. and and you hear about the workers and the abuse that happened, it's awful, of course, but you do think like, what were they supposed to do? If you don't right. know how to control like a huge guy and you're a little yeah. lady, it's be like before the days of, of antipsychotics and tranquilizers. So is that, do you that think the really main mm-hmm. situation now where that's how it's handled? Sedatives. Yeah, yeah. You can calm them yeah. down and get them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I really am sympathetic about the people that have to yeah. manage all of that. It's a lot of work and like Alzheimer's patients. It's, it's not that, easy. Uh, that, is the difficult, that is the one that I like. What is it that makes it feel like real hard to you? Cause mm-hmm. I agree, but I don't know why. Yeah. It's is it the, the repetition? Yeah. And the lack of, uh, I, also maybe it's the, it's the, well, I would say uh, fucking a, I don't really know now that you say that maybe it's, it's the, the, the decline. The yeah, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you kind of know what you're getting with somebody with, you like know, a diagnosis that's, illness. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it does get worse, but. It seems like there's more of like an ebb and flow, whereas, you know, certain kinds of dementia and Alzheimer's, it's mm-hmm. like, it's just a progressive decline, right? And it does feel like, Mm, more people affected by it maybe, but I don't know if that's really true. And then maybe it's the, also for me, just the personal, like the, like thinking about grandma kind of thing that, that yeah. does it. Yeah. You know? The the people that work in those fields, I tip my hat because yes, you guys so do hard. really hard work and um, are often invisible, you know? Yes. Yeah. Any part of that work. I hope that sites like eBay and stuff, though, they took them down once Slate contacted them, but up until that point, they didn't. And they claimed that it was like, oh, yeah, that's against policy. But but there's just a lot of them. They need to have a better way to monitor that. Because that is really sad. Like the worst days of your life are being sold as like entertainment. That really is. Wait, that rings a bell. Oh, God. (laughs) As soon as you said it, I'm like, wait a sec. This sounds familiar. I'm trying to think of other things that would fall into that category that maybe would be. Well, they were sort of arguing that just even like the spooky thing about like yeah. asylums and like yeah. haunt, turning them into haunted houses and stuff. Yeah. They felt that that was disrespectful because it shouldn't be entertainment. But yeah. on the flip side, you know, it's hard being a person. And yes. oftentimes when we're confronting our mortality or, or the things about being human that are really difficult, like mental illness, yes, you know, that's a way of coping. Yes. Same with the death stuff. That's exactly why we have horror movies and all that. Yeah. Good point. Susie, <laughs> again, clap like that. Good. That was excellent. Write that in an article. I don't know. I just was reading it and I just, you know, that feeling when no. you're reading an article and you're like, I can see the other side of this. Yes. Yeah. That's when you, you should write that. Cause that is really, that's a really good point. Cause it is very, it, there's that, it kind of falls into that same category of like why we like watching that kind of stuff. Why we. <clears throat> and in, I bet in your experience, because you're a person who does have an interest in like the dead and, and witchy stuff. Yes. I think it can make you more empathetic. Yes. Because it's that death positive sort of like you're not avoiding yes. right. the inevitable. Right. We know that we studied, we, we talked about this in a previous episode, that the people who have the least anxiety around death and around, um, yeah, I mean, other people's death and their own are goths. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're like the nicest. There's been right. studies and same done. Same way we were talking about like music and personality types and people who liked like like yeah, metal. Yeah, that was so good. And like all like they were the ones who were the nicest and like the sweetest people. Yeah, right. So, right. but don't fucking put them on eBay. Like that. It, 
I guarantee you the person that put them on eBay is not the same person that is like you. No, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. Maybe the people buying it to put it in their collection because I am into like the pe- like the whole old medical. <laughs> I know. And stuff like right, that. right, right. I mean, I don't have them in my house. But yeah. I'll tell you what I'm buying, and that is kitsch products of all kinds. Now that I do have in my house. It's getting or embarrassing. My beautiful curls. <laughs> Sarah and I have been like having a lot of conversations about hair. Maybe this is like sure what happens when people get old. I think it is. I think <laughs> right? that's it. Is we're like, oh, we're changing. And then we're like, right. We need but, to do th- preventative things. Yeah. That's it. like, it keeps my hair from breaking and snapping when I use really good yeah. products Sarah, for like accessories for my hair. Well, and like you guys know she's sandals. been using like our gator as a hair bonnet. Yes. And. Yes. So you know she's committed to this. This is a new part of my life since the incident at the salon. But I now have the Kitsch silk uh, pillowcases to protect from breakage. I have the heatless hot rollers, which are great and really comfortable and don't damage your hair. They have all kinds of stuff. They have like the shampoo in a bar, which is great. That would have been great for camp. Do you have one? You should take it. That's such a good idea. No, I don't have one. My God, damn it. Okay, remind me to say something about camp after we're done. I have another thing to say. Anyway, they have quick dry hair towels. um, And then they have scrunchies and real cute stuff. Just check it out. It's really fun. Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com dot com slash brain candy that's right 30 percent off anything and everything at my kitsch spelled m-y-k-i-t-s-h-s-c-h dot com slash brain candy one more time my kitsch.com slash brain candy for 30 percent off your order i want you 30 percent. that is a good it's a good that, i'm getting everything <laughs> she's stocking up yep uh oh did, they have a cool stranger things collection i did not know holy that. crap Oh, why wasn't this out when I ordered? St- I'm really mad. It's Susie. Have you seen this? No, I didn't oh know my you God. had it. It's like a cute vintage, like rainbow stripe, like 80s look. This has to happen. With a matching sleep mask. Oh. <laughs> okay. I want you to take with you to camp. Yeah. A couple envelopes and stamps, and I want you to send me old timey camp letters. Oh, d- Done. Done. <laughs> I'm going to put it on my to-do list. Put it on the to-do list. Put Maybe it on the some to-do stickers, list. something. Put it on the to-do list. Buy camp letters stamps. are hilarious. Yeah, I was. Uh, this is funny. I was actually going. I never buy stamps, and I, I was in line the other day, and there was a Shell Silverstein Giving Tree stamp that's out Aww. right now. Remember when I read it to Link though. and he cried, and I was like, Sarah, <laughs> the best. <That> was See. <laughs> I did re- I did watch a TikTok video that talked about how the giving tree was basically teaching um, self abandonment and like people pleasing, <laughs> and that we totally. should not read that to kids. Is it like kind of true? This, like, feeling- it is true. I'm like, <laughs> this is why I am the way I am, and I was forced to memorize it for a performance. Oh, yes, the ill fated talent show. And the tree was happy. <laughs> <laughs> did you say it like that? Of course I did. Do we have a video of this? I wish. That would be all too good. It's been lost to time. I'm sure. And that was when I performed with Amanda Bynes. I know. That's so. why I said the ill-fated <laughs> talent yeah. show performance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sarah lost to a Nickelodeon star, and she is yeah. not over it. I am over it now. I am. I, I guess, am yeah. T- the, the scales have really been I am, however, out. not over the mistake that I made during that I could still see in my mind because people giggled and it was funny. What and happened? I, I had a little scarf that I used and when I was, it was like a silk, like a see-through little little fabric piece that was green. And when I was the tree, I would hold it up like I was the tree, right? Oh my like, God. And then when I was the little boy, I would take it down. And, and it was like really good and cute. My mom was like definitely the one who, you know, she was the creative idea. vision. Yeah, she was yeah. the creative vision yeah. behind this. Yeah. Yeah. Also, mom, you gave dad a hard time for getting in the middle of my projects. Uh, <laughs> mm, I just want to like remind you of my Michelangelo 
costume and <laughs> or she would say sarah you pronounce it wrong Mika Mika Angelo. Angelo. yes she was like you gotta say it like that okay mom we get it and uh <laughs> and and this right here um but yeah so i held it up when i was the tree but when i there was a, there was one moment when i went to go switch from the boy to the tree and it got caught like i held it too tight and it got caught on my forehead so i did this little jerky move oh where my God. it's almost like like Oh I my went God. to go. She's head banging a piece of fabric. Yeah, it's uh, yes, exactly. It's almost like if you went to go put your hand th- through, I don't know, your sleeve, but it was all tied up, and you like couldn't get it through, and so, and you tried to muscle your way out. Yeah, and then I just <sighs> did this jerky head movement that just made me look like a chicken, kind of pecking, and then the audience giggled a little bit, and I was like. I can still remember to this day, like, I, it was probably one person. It was probably like, who cares? But my little kid <laughs> brain was like, the Madison Square Garden <laughs> was <laughs> laughing at me. I'll die. Right. This is why I lost. Because uh, I have to blame something. Can't blame myself. But isn't it terrible that we I'm all have those that. things? Oh and we all fine. we remember them about ourselves, and literally no one there would remember that. This is the spotlight effect we talked it's about. It's terrible. Last I hate it. Remember that we like. I really recommend everybody read that article because just knowing those terms is so powerful. It's like, oh, this is the what is one of them? The consensus effect. Like this is me thinking that everybody else believes the same thing that I believe. <laughs> For example, uh, when you watch a TV show and it gets canceled and you're like, what? Everybody, what? Those, and you were watching it. You're like, wasn't everybody watching that? No, you were watching that. You just think everybody was. Or when you go to a restaurant and you hate it and you're like, oh, that place is terrible. You think it's going to be terrible, get terrible reviews. But somebody else goes there like, oh, my God, I love that place. You're yeah. like, how can you love that place? You're like shocked. That feeling of being shocked is the consensus effect. I did not say this last episode, did I? No, not about oh, okay. the consensus. This was one this is one of the things I want I, I I get so excited and then I don't talk about the things that I want to talk about. I should I should get like two this is why we have in the show shit we got wrong because like I always have there's always more that I'm like there's oh, always another more. thing. Yes. So uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean I guess I'm just wanting to defend the consensus effect because it's sort of like If a restaurant is gross, everyone should agree about that. Yeah, but, but it's, you could have had a situation at that restaurant where you like had. It's through a different filter. Yes. You got sick because, I don't know. Or like you get into a fight with your partner there. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. There was a breakfast restaurant that my ex-husband broke up with me at when the first time we broke up with me and I could never eat there again. And it was so good. Oh, my bistro. (laughs) Shout out to Blackboard Bistro. Blackboard Bistro. Wait, so he took you to brunch or whatever. Yes. And you thought it was going to be a regular old brunch. Yes. You did not know you were blindsided. Yeah. Are you serious? Why would someone do that? Just tell me beforehand. Well, in 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 his defense, we lived together, and then I was like, "Well, I hate this," and so I was like, um, "I'm moving out." <laughs> and then I moved out and got my own place, and I was so excited about getting my own place, and I thought we were going to stay together. And then, and then he said, out. "Oh," yeah. but like, you know, sometimes with couples when they're, uh, you know, they come to me, and I want to get an idea of what the the relationship is like and where everybody's mind is and their commitment level. I'll say, okay, if this relationship were a room, like where are you in relation to the door? Like, do you have one hand on the doorknob? Are you already out the door? Do you have one foot out the door? Are you like on the couch waiting for somebody to come in? Like, where are you? Mm. And um, if I think about where I was at that blackboard bistro, yeah, I was... mm, well beyond one foot out the door. <laughs> so well, he that's just a gave shame. me a little, little boost I needed. I guess so, but then so. he ruined the blackboard bistro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were better rest. Collateral there. damage. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something that I don't have my foot out the door about, and that is chime. 
which is a wonderful company that can help you, you know, get your credit back on track. Yes. They have a credit builder. Yes. I think a lot of people get anxiety about all that stuff. So this, let me tell you, it is so important to get your finances in order and it is something that often haunts people. Yeah. Like, like there's that so much shame cloud. about it. So much. And yeah. it's often easier than you think it is. And there are things like this that can help. Yeah. Chime has a um, secured Chime credit builder visa credit card that'll help you build credit and get your score up, which I know stresses everybody out. Yeah. Um, so you can continue your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash Brain Candy. That's Chime.com slash Brain Candy. Let me read all the fine print. The Chime Credit Card Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact is... Score may vary, and some user scores may not improve. Whoa. Got it? Okay. Yes. Uh, moving right along. What else is on my list to talk to you about? How about, oh, there was this real, you know how I love the New Yorker documentaries? There was yeah. one that I watched that was about these two people in their 80s, a woman and a man, who started doing stand-up comedy at 80 years old. Oh, and I love I love it. stories like this. These yeah. are the, you're never too, too yes. old for anything. I love that. It's never that. too late. Because that's a great message. I mean, yes. I'm only in my 40s and I feel like, well, I had a good run. <laughs> no. I get like that all the time. It's so no. stupid. It's like real bad human, maybe human nature or something. Right. But then I'll see people like that and I'm like, heck yeah, do it. It's almost yeah. like it gets better because you don't give a F. It does. And they're both really funny. They're both Jewish. They're not related. They were, they're friends. And um, they had both lost their partners. And so they were widowed and they felt like, why not? Yeah. And the guy, he used to be a psychiatrist. And now he's... Those make great comedians. I know. I was like, yeah, man. It's like Bob Newhart kind of, even though Bob wasn't one in real life, but right. it felt like that. Stop and, it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. Um, one weird thing though was like the lady, she said her kids do not support her and they are like estranged now just because she's doing stand up. So weird. What is that about? I can imagine feeling weird about it because, like, Peg does weird stuff. I just thinks of that. <laughs> yeah, maybe he could help her. Like, my mom is a strange person. You know, she dresses weird for her age and stuff like that. And there are moments when I'm, like, a little embarrassed, as we all are about our parents sometimes. Yeah. But, like, to stop talking to them because they're doing stand-up? And wouldn't you say, like, there are parts of that that are really fun and you're definitely going to embrace when you're older and like you kind of have in a different way a oh I yeah what people think like, yes i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do and you can have your opinion about it thing yeah and i'm gonna become my mom and that's just how it is it and, is <laughs> it's yeah. so weird how it happens so weird we can't we can't help it do you think it's biological or just um like cultural like because that's what you're I think you know what you watched what you saw. Yeah. I always say I'm just thankful for my dad because growing up, I felt really, it was difficult to have one parent who was so devout and sincere and earnest. Mm -hmm. And then I had this other parent who was just like iconoclastic and sarcastic and bitter. And I'm so thankful for it now because what a gift to have those two <laughs> totally yes. the dichotomous uh, points of view. Yes. See, I, I, this has been like a, um, a, a message I feel like a lot of people have needed right recently that our survival skills that are negative, that maybe have some negative parts to it are also superpowers and mm -hmm. there are also real positive parts to it. And like, you know, having a childhood like that, that could be so difficult. But now you're like, man, I am so grateful for those two perspectives. And that there, if we can look at the 
See, Susie's secretly the optimist. I am. Yes. Yeah. And you that- can take, you have really good, um, what do they call that? Like you're a good reframer, like positive reframing. Right. But I don't want to admit it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but that's, the da- that's your dad. That's yeah. your dad talking. And the other one's your mom. Yeah. And I just am so thankful for that. And, you know, I I look at the kids I grew up with who are all fundamentalist Christian and they all still are, except me and the gay people. <laughs> the kids who grew up and were gay, they all left too. And I yeah. know that it's because of my dad. You have a dissenting voice mm. who's like, really? Is that what you believe? Does that make no. sense to you? And it's a critical thought I'm thankful for. Yes. I bet you feel like that too, even though you have a complicated relationship with your dad. I'm sure yeah. there are things that he brought to your life that were yes. not all bad. Absolutely. That it's, that's a big, that's a big, um, like a hard thing to overcome and a hard, and there are, there are things that I do. There are techniques and tools that I use in therapy to help people do that and kind of separate those two things where you can have, hold people accountable and have feelings of, um, uh, you know, even like anger and be, upset with somebody for things, but then on the other side, recognize the ways that they impacted you in a positive way. It's kind of like that turn, like get finding yeah. super hit power in the negative. Things. Yes. It's an attitude of gratitude. It sure is. And don't but, we know that that's the thing that makes us happy that we always come down to? Yeah. But if anybody says that to me when I'm in a bad mood, I want to punch them right in the face. So. Right in the face. She's like, oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Stop saying that. We know. Yeah. Okay. Enough. Um, There was another sex doll story. You want to hear it? Always. Are sex doll stories our new poo stories? Yeah. Yes. For some reason, people have stopped pooping in public, Sarah, and I don't understand. <laughs> Is it that we've stopped going in public? Like going, going, just it, just yeah. Everyone's going just around in... a toilet now. <laughs> yeah, we did have a lot of stories about new kinds of toilets and new porta potties. Maybe those are just like you know. Really I working. hope so because I what am. If that's it. That is an important thing in our civically that we do need more public toilets it's unfair to the unhoused population yes because they gotta go yes anyway anyway i hope there are more toilets but this i i think that you have cracked the case in in saying that about what annoys me about these sex doll things oh okay why are there articles about them? And why are people like coming out with their dumb stories about why they got oh. a sex doll? Just buy it and uh-huh. shut up about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> is this a new, maybe that you're right. This is, this is kind of, there is a wave of, yes. of stories about this. And it's like I a totally copycat crime agree. now. Yes. I've always felt like this, that the movie industry does this. Where it's like, oh, we're doing alien movies yes. now? Okay. Where, and then I'm like, oh, we're doing disaster films now? Okay. Like uh, the 90s and then aughts were big on this, on like the themed, like, you know, it was like. <laughs> yes. It's like they get. Armageddon. This uh, made a uh, million dollars, uh, so we got to do another Independence one. Independence Day. Uh, uh, you know, all of it. They all came out at the same freaking time. So, you know, maybe it's that. It's like people are like, oh, or it, it might be. In the same way that those kind of like horror films or disaster movies like play on our worst fears. So maybe it's like, what are people afraid of right now? Maybe this is like, oh, oh, I'm, I feel it. Maybe this is like we've been alone and because mm-hmm. of the pandemic, people are looking for like nurture. Oh, oh, th- come on. This is it. This is it. Totally. People are looking for nurture. People are looking for human connection because they're craving that because nobody had that for so long, didn't have any hugs or anything. And we're looking just for like, I'll take it from a f- fucking plastic doll, you know, in the same way that that monkey study, that Harlow monkey study the, with the wire monkey, how that little monkey chose the wrapped oh. up blanket with no food and because yeah. nurture and connection and love and like warmth is more important biologically than fucking food that so maybe that's the the epidemic sarah's got a theory (laughs) totally 
I think that's a good one. I think you're right because it, or we we're just that. normalizing Heard it with that. all this journalism about it, and everyone's like, "Yeah, I need one too." But in this case, this was a gal who has a, a boyfriend, and he has she claims really high libido, and she just couldn't meet his needs. So she found this doll that looks just like her, and now they have threesomes and stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, I like that, actually. Oh, man. Really? Here's why. Why are you like this? I know. It's the worst, but also the best. Because <laughs> he is... He... There was an... I don't know if it was an article or an interview or something that Dan Savage, who's the sex writer... Yes. Um, And he pro- Is he just a sex writer or does he have an other no, that's credentials? No, that's it. He- like, Okay. Oh, but, no. No credentials. Um, I was just, like, wondering. But yeah. But that he's – he knows what he's talking about. So uh, <laughs> he – I'm like, yeah, listen, to Tim, though. Uh, he says, and I agree with this, and so, do, so does the, the research and, the, like, the material out there, that if you – if your partner – if you and your partner are in a committed relationship where there's healthy communication, that – Every partner has the right to have their sexual needs met. And if the person that you're with can't or won't or is not willing to, like if there isn't a compromise and the other person's like, I need this in order to be sexually fulfilled, then it's okay to, with communication and with agreement, seek yeah, that. I in would other agree. Places. So I think a... And it can get very fucking complicated when you add another person, like with a pulse. (laughs) And so, you know. Yes, right. So true. So I think that (laughs) replacing that need or filling that need with an inanimate object really is a healthy outlet for that where there's really no victim. There's yeah, no, no victim. Everyone's no happy. way to complicate that. People's needs are met. Their communication. Here's the thing. It's like the people who are having the freaky sex where we're like, well, that is weird. They're the ones who are communicating. I the know best. that is so true. They're the ones who are the most fulfilled. So who's fucking laughing? Because all the judgy people who are like, oh, 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 I can't believe that they're doing that. Not you, but like the other people who are like saying that just about like anything are all repressed and having shitty sex and like I, not I able to ask for what they need. So I think, you know, the kink community is the best when it comes to consent acceptance, non-judgment, like that's all the stuff that you want to have good sex. Like good sex is feeling like you're not being judged, feeling like you're connected with your partner, feeling like you could be open, feeling like you are accepted. Yeah, I would agree with you. And that's why after I finished the article, I just concluded like the only problem I have with this is that I've I've had to read about it. Like just do it and this, don't <laughs> write to, to the New York yeah. Post or whatever. Why are we do- yeah. what is that part of it? Yeah, I I do think that the more interesting story, it's kind of like the feelings about the feelings, you know? It's like the more interesting story is the story <laughs> about why we're doing stories about this. <laughs> Right, exactly. Why do we really want to keep well, talking? I'm like about putting it? Susie to. I'm like Susie. Okay, you need to write an article about this, <laughs> and then you need to write an article about that. She's like, I don't even want to do that, Sarah. That book's solid like, over you're here. You're so good, right? Yeah, I think you're on to something though. And and in this case especially, they really were super happy and everything was fine. And yes, I was just like, why is this an article? Just like think about the. Think about your relationship and whether and if you had imagine like you have this desire this need this like whatever it is that could stem from i don't know a need to work through some childhood trauma shit who the fuck knows (laughs) and you feel comfortable enough because your relationship like you've you've developed an openness and an understanding and a communication in that relationship where you can go to your partner and say, I know this is kind of weird. See, that's the preface. Then everything's yeah. fine. If you say that, that's but my I'm policy. Sure, like, Just being yeah, like, I know. Listen, I don't weird. want you to judge me, 
But yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure that's what that conversation looks like. Yeah, then it's fine. And so that is a be- – like if I saw – if I – like, you know, a couple came in and they're like, yeah, this – like claps for them. <laughs> Everybody's getting claps today. But that would be – that would that would tell me a lot about their ability to discuss hard things, to not get defensive, to find solutions, to communicate, to like their commitment level. They're both in that relationship room sitting on the couch, probably naked. So Yeah, yeah, they're into it. They're into it. I think she was a little flattering of herself thinking the doll looked t- like her because the doll had a little bit more of a curve yeah. to her. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. My ex-husband got a tattoo while we were together of a mermaid that looked like me. And I will say it looked like me in the same way that <laughs> doll probably, where I'm like, it is an idealized version of me, like with a Well, that's a face, nice. Maybe that's how on. he saw you. But yeah. With the yeah. filter on. All yeah. right. Let's wind it down because, I mean, we've covered a lot and we're not going to see Mostly each other camp. for another week. <laughs> Mostly camp and how Sarah's yeah. going to have... Oh, my gosh. That means we have to put a pause on our, our, cha- our watching of the challenge. Yeah, we're going to have a week Damn. off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's tough times over here. Now I'm at me, here. too. <laughs> just realized what's all, what all is entailed. Yeah, there's a lot of sacrifice happening so she can help these kids. Yeah. Susie um, also is sacrificing. Yeah, we, we all are. This is a joint effort. Uh, Bill Burr special, not the best one he's ever done, but still had some funny moments. Um, I just watched an old clip of Norm Macdonald that was cracking me up and he was like, yeah, you know, uh, I had to show my ID to get in here. That's a really weird abbreviation because the I is short for I, (laughs) but the D is short for dentification. (laughs) And I keep playing it in my head. It's so funny to me. Oh, I just the term dentification. I, I just heard somebody talk about a joke he did where he said anytime there was it was daylight savings and he, people would complain about it, he'd go, eh, I give it six months. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah, don't that. worry. Oh, good time. See, oh, we need laughter. This is the we thing. We do. This show is a public service, I tell you. Um, don't, don't buy any medical records on eBay is gross. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't. Do For that. your weird cabinet of curiosities or whatever. Yeah. And then like, give a lot of respect to people who work in that field, the mental health field. And that is for sure. And the aging with the aging population. And absolutely. That and is Alzheimer's. heroic. Yes. Work. Shout out to all of you guys. Remember when Sarah was a tree <laughs> oh my god so embarrassing i should find a scarf and do a recreation of my head getting cut <laughs> please do and like do a video of it because i i think it's like worse than what you think it is <sighs> and like so bad and like not one time three times <sighs> Pet, like a there has cat. got to be a video of this moment i don't know why <sighs> wasn't sally there oh yeah she didn't document it she did. I, you know, she's coming to visit, um, and I think she's at, moving out of Costa Rica. She's done with Costa Rica. Is she? She's moving here. Wow, yeah. back to the U.S. of A.? Yeah, I believe so. She's putting all of her stuff in storage in Costa Rica. Sarah's poking some holes in um, this like, stuff. Hmm. Uh, but we're going to the storage unit that she has out here. And by hey. out here, I mean in, in- Oregon. <laughs> So oh I could go get that and then drive it out to Colorado. But I believe in there are all the videotapes and all the VHSs. Have a so perusal, you know. I will there in about six months or so. We may have a viewing party. That would be truly. It would be peak brain candy. Yeah, I want to see yours too. Like that would be. First of all. We did not own a camera. <laughs> you don't have any video from when you were... Wow. That's so sad for me. I always ask my friends, yeah. like, do your family take any video when I was over? It so good. Oh, <laughs> That's for real. So, did your family... T- do you happen to have... Mine are, we had, like, one of those cameras with the, like, curtain on it when it just, like, exploded. It took six hours Stop. to get a picture. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, my God. Anyway, 
<laughs> we did reflect on our childhoods and we're gra- grateful about them. And then I just undid that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sex doll journalism has got to go. Got and to now go. Sarah has got to go to camp. Leave us a five star review. Please subscribe. Tell a friend. Buy our merch. You know the drill. Yeah. And we'll see you next Love time. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.